One of the things that all of us have to do in life at some point is to overcome obstacles. And it's how you approach the situations and how you devise strategies and tactics to overcome those obstacles and achieve success that separates people who are really successful from the also-rans in the rest of the community. When I was at school, one of my teachers had a poster on his classroom wall, and it said, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And it took me a while to figure out what the poster was really saying, because, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Well, what if you don't like lemonade? But really, the message of the poster was that you need to make the best out of what you've got. You can't always have a smooth situation. Sometimes you might have some lemons. Well, you need to do something about that. And the way to do that is to make lemonade. And every obstacle can be turned into an opportunity. You just have to learn how to approach it differently to most people. And this takes creativity and perseverance. And in fact, some of the most successful people on the planet have had to overcome obstacles that would finish off most people. And often this involves thinking outside the box. Now, according to Wikipedia, thinking outside the box also known as thinking out of the box or thinking beyond the box, and especially in Australia, thinking outside the square, is a metaphor that means to think differently, unconventionally, or from a new perspective. And this phrase often refers to novel or creative thinking. The term is thought to derive from management consultants in the 1970s and 1980s, challenging their clients to solve the nine dots puzzle, whose solution requires some lateral thinking. Now, basically, as you can see on the screen here, you have a grid of nine dots. And the goal of the puzzle is to link all nine dots using four straight lines or fewer without lifting the pen and without tracing the same line more than once. So, how would you solve this puzzle? Pause the video now and give it a go. Did you have a try? Well, here's one solution, and you'll notice it involves thinking outside the box. The instructions say you've got to use four lines or less. They don't say that you can't go over the edge. Anyway, back to what I was saying earlier about successful people overcoming obstacles. Did you know, for example, that when Thomas Edison's laboratory and factory burned to the ground, he didn't do what most people would do and go, oh no, that's it, I'm finished. Instead, he saw the opportunity to rebuild and make it newer and better. And this enabled him to take advantage of new technologies many of which he'd invented, and go on to make even greater discoveries. Bill Gates' first business went bust, so raising finance for his next venture must have been a real obstacle. You know, you go to the bank manager and ask for a loan, and they want to know what your experience is in business, and you say, well, my first company went bankrupt with massive debts, and the bank manager will say, thank you very much, and show you out the door. So, obviously, it took a lot of ingenuity uh, for him to actually find the money to start his new venture uh, to overcome that obstacle. And, of course, the new venture was Microsoft, and it went on to make him a multi-billionaire. But for a lot of people, the fact that they've had one business and it's gone under uh, that's, is going to make them you know, a credit risk as far as conventional finance is concerned, and they won't be able to overcome that obstacle if they follow the conventional route. Oprah Winfrey got fired from her first job as a local TV station because the producer thought she was unfit for television, which is hardly a glowing reference, so she had another big obstacle to overcome when she tried to get another job at another TV station. 
And if you've ever been fired from a job, you'll know that it is actually very difficult to find another one in the same line of work when you can't get a reference and your previous boss thinks you weren't any good. James Dyson got fed up with his vacuum cleaner losing suction when the bag got full. But he went through over 5,000 prototypes before he perfected his bagless vacuum cleaner. Now, I could go on, but I think you get the picture. Now, sometimes brainstorming is the best way to come up with ideas and overcome obstacles. In a brainstorming session, a group of people get together and try to come up with as many ideas as possible. Everything, no matter how silly it might seem, gets written down. And actually, sometimes coming up with a silly idea that you know isn't going to be taken any further can spur other people in the room to come up with actually a really good idea because your silly idea gets them thinking. Now, all these ideas get whittled down to a few good ideas or solutions that are researched further, and the best idea is acted on or put into practice. And the best thing to do in a brainstorming session? You guessed it. Think outside the box. <laughs>